All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, last week we stripped down our mini truck and we picked up this truck that Hunter donated to us because like the title says, we're building an off-road wrecker out of our mini truck. This Power Stroke has the perfect axles for our build. They turn super sharp, parts are everywhere, and they're tougher than nails. So before we take the axles out of this truck, we've got to disassemble pretty much the whole thing because once the axles are out, we have no way of moving this truck around. We got this thing running yesterday, but it does not run good. really really hoping that this motor would fit in the mini truck but after taking a couple of measurements i don't think there's a chance that this stupid thing's gonna fit i think from the front of this motor to the back of the transfer case is longer than the whole mini truck <laughs> <laughs> so i don't think we can use it but we are gonna keep it because it runs it shifts well we don't know if it shifts from first to second it goes forward and backwards so we're gonna take it put new head gaskets in it and we're saving it for another project we got coming up and I'm, I'm excited because we've talked about a 6 old power stroke in a Jeep or something like that for a long flipping time. And that would be dang cool. It's everybody's favorite motor, the 6 old Ford Power Stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it's reliable. Mm -hmm. They never break down. Yeah. <laughs> Super lightweight. They tow great. They yeah. don't run hot. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, they never need injectors. No. The turbos are great. They're just the most reliable diesel you can buy. Alex, how fast do you think you can have this cab off? <laughs> By the time you go get me some hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, full disclaimer here. Alex is an absolute animal. We don't really know where he came from whose family he's actually a part of, but he works so fast. I think you're the best guy for this job, for sure. Oh, you're easily the best guy for this job. Listen, I don't do good work. I do fast work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just want to drive it. I don't want to work on this crap. I want to drive that truck. So the faster you can do it, the faster we can drive it, and that's my motto. What's, what's like, the percentage, like, from at work? You do it really fast, but, like, it actually working. How many, like, what's the percentage? What? He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> this I don't know what he's talking No. I'm making it more along the lines work. of like, there's good, there's cheap, and there's fast. And you don't get good or cheap with me. It's just fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to pull the cab off. This probably bust every single sensor, yeah. every single electrical connector. But <laughs> it'll be it'll off be in off. 10 minutes. Yeah. And we don't have to deal with it. While Alex is working on the body mounts, I'm going to pull off these doors because I'm going to try to slide the forks in here. And I'm hoping that one, it picks it up and it's not too heavy, but two, we don't completely ruin this cab because it's cab's pretty dang nice really the only thing that we have to pull this cab off is brady skid steer so we've got kind of no choice but to figure out how to get that thing to work oh. Oh my God. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. oh we're gonna end up with cancer if you keep doing that go get our ac evacuation system <laughs> where is it well, look who came to say hi. Yeah. Little Gunner. He's two months old, and he's the biggest reason my Jeep still isn't done. But it's okay, because we love him. He's our first one, 
And mom's been taking real good care of him. Yeah, you better get back to work or Gunner's going to start yelling at us too. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is teach him how to yell at Caleb and Alex. The apple don't fall far from the tree. We got this thing pretty much ready to get the cab off of it, so hopefully we don't find any loose ends that we're going to have to pull off when this thing's in the middle of the air. This makes me really excited for whatever project we're going to use this for, because for some reason I love these motors. We get a lot of crap from everybody about 6Os. We've had literally hundreds of them, and we absolutely love them. What is your plan in here to lift this thing up? Well, our plan, we've been thinking about this a lot. We're going to slide some wood across so it reaches that side as well and then the forks from the skid will go and lift that part up so we don't you know lift the forks up and puncture the roof that's what we're trying to get away from because this cab's still in really good shape tell you what a car lift right now would be excellent i've lifted some heavy things with it before but this is probably the heaviest that i can think of All right, I got the cab removal kit. <laughs> and some catches, it can either be clipped with this or ground off with this. So it's coming off tonight. Wait, 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 AC. We already evacuated the AC, we just didn't disconnect. <laughs> AC is disconnected, we're good to go. There it goes. Ooh, look at the piece of wood in there. That piece of wood looks like it's from a Dr. Seuss book. Ooh. We forgot a line, but I got it covered. This is absolutely terrifying with this thing clear in the air, both pieces of wood are bent and all the duct tape's broke. He said that's the cab removal kit that he's got there. I believe it. I think he's ready. So we got the cab off this truck last night and we got so excited that we put my wheels and tires on it. Before we pull the motor training transfer case out, we're gonna degrease the whole thing cause it's pretty nasty and it's been getting the shop really dirty. So we're gonna go through, clean the whole thing, make sure the motor's clean. So when we put it away for our next project, we're working with a clean motor. Normally we don't care if there's grease. We're normally walking around head to toe covered in it, but Brady's making us do this if we wanna work on it in the shop. Wouldn't it be better to actually like spray it off first and then do that so we get the dirt off? That's why we got four cans. Oh, do we? Two pre, two post. I, that was not what I was thinking. I'm just, I just got told to spray this thing off with degreaser. The biggest problem about washing stuff up here in the middle of winter is the spigots always completely froze. You've got to have vice grips or your teeth to try and get the hose off of it. Your teeth? What are you trying to bite it off well, for? Well, normally you don't have a set of vice grips to pull that thing off. But that brings us to today's sponsor, Aquor. Some say this hose spigot is the future of water systems, and we're going to show you how it works. All you got to do is cut your old turd off, slide the new one on, crimp it on, screw it to your wall, and you're done. And no matter what style of water lines you have in your house, they have an adapter for it. The coolest part about this whole water system is the quick disconnect ends. Brady just turned the water back on. We're gonna see how well this thing works. Holy flip, it's on? It's on. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? So the reason that this is freeze proof is because the water is stored so far in your wall, that it can never freeze. It stays warm because it's inside your house. Who would have ever thought that disconnecting your hose would be so much fun? Me and Alex have been playing with it for 20 minutes. We wanted to give a big thank you to Aquor for making Brady's house Gucci, supporting the channel, and making it so we can pressure wash whatever we want in the dead middle of winter. 
A couple weeks ago, we had a subscriber reach out and tell us that he had this forklift that they couldn't get to run right. They're sick of dealing with it. And they told us they'd make us a screaming deal on it. So this morning we went and picked it up and we got to show you guys the newest member of the Peck Brothers fleet. This thing is a freaking thing. This is the nicest piece of equipment we'll ever have. You ain't allowed to be moving that around. Come on now, doll. Oh, well, actually, yeah, let's, like, I'm happy that that's the case. Let's see your certificate. Me out. <laughs> I'm actually forklift certified. Are you, Are you really? really? Oh, yeah. Come on. I took the class at Terraflex. Back when I used to work at Terraflex when I was 12. Wow, like, look at the sticker it had on it. I don't, well, no. It came I with that. I might have just put... You got it. Now it's really a part of the family now after I put this sticker on. This puppy has a full bore Chevrolet engine. So we should be able to get this thing running right. We can't get our Chevy motors running right. Well, this one actually <laughs> runs pretty good when it's warm. <laughs> it no just turbo. doesn't like to start. There's no turbos on this one. That's true, and it's propane. This forklift came to us at the perfect time because we're going to use it to pull this 6.0 out of this frame. Just that motor alone is over a thousand pounds. Right here is going to be the home for our Ford 6.0 diesel power plant for our next project in the future. We just don't know what it's going to go into yet. For the next 10 days, we're running a sale on this shirt. Jump on our website, peckbrothersoffroad.com. It's a perfect Valentine's gift for your wife, your husband, your kid, your dog. Anybody that wears a shirt, they will love this one. Now back to the mini truck. So after racking our brains for a couple days, thinking of ways that we can strengthen this little mini truck frame, because it's gonna have a huge boom that's gonna have to lift Caleb's Jeep off a trail one day. We started doing some measuring on this frame and we think we can get this cab to work on this frame. I was originally planning on building a completely custom frame for it. The biggest problem with that is we're trying to get this thing done as fast as we can and that tubing to build a big, huge, tough frame is super expensive. So by using this frame, one, we might be able to make it the off-road games now. Two, it's a big old one ton F-350 frame that we can throw a Jeep on the back if we need to. And the more Ford parts we can use, the better. We're just gonna take and cut this mini truck frame right here so we can keep this cross member so stuff doesn't get all squirrely in there. And once we have the back of this thing cut off, we'll probably be able to lift this mini cab up and put it right on the frame where we want so we can figure out where else we need to cut and shrink and shorten and adjust. I love when the good news I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's really cool. No, that's exactly what it is. You think? I love it. I'm in love. <laughs> Are you? It is turning into a monster. It's huge. It's huge for sure. We need to sink it down. What do you think, Gabe? I think it needs to be much, much lower. And the truck don't even have a lift. <laughs> I don't hate it. That's all I'm saying. I think it's sick. 12 o'clock midnight. We do have a plan to get the cab sitting lower in the frame. It took us forever, but we marked on the Ford chassis where all we need to cut to get this thing to sink down. And we also marked on the bottom of the mini truck cab exactly where we need to cut. So here's our plasma cutter montage.
We finally got everything plazed off so this thing sits down into place and oh my gosh, it literally couldn't sit any better. <laughs> this has got to be the coolest thing we've ever made. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it looks so much better now. Oh, tons better. With the front of the frame cut off, the body sunk down. Mm -hmm. It it looks <laughs> it looked like a monster truck and now it just looks like like it was meant to be like that from the factory. I'm I'm debating on selling my Jeep and just driving this. You should. I think so. Yeah. A little bit This cheaper. is way cooler than your Jeep. We still have a buttload to do on this truck. We gotta chop the frame, move the wheelbase in so it actually looks like a normal mini truck and not a semi. And then we gotta find a motor for this thing. We've been wanting to find a diesel and the 6.0 that we have is just way too big. It's too long, our drive line will be this long. If anybody knows of a cheap 4BT Cummins or any motor like that that you can run a Chevy transmission behind, please let us know. We gotta get a motor coming for this. And if you wanna see more of this mini truck, make sure you're subscribed. We're gonna be doing episodes on this every week until it's done. This looks like Alex's truck inside. <laughs>